everybody. Another session on the Holy Spirit and power. This is part two of Power Source. And we found out in part one that the Holy Spirit is linked with power for the Christian life. To live victoriously, to be what God wants us to be, we need the power of God through the Holy Spirit operational in our life. We need to be, as it were, plugged in. If we're not plugged in, no matter how good it looks, there's no juice, no energy. So now we're going to talk about one of the main reasons why the Holy Spirit was sent to earth. And that was to give power for ministry and witnessing to those that are followers of Jesus Christ. Let me read to you from Acts 1. The setting is this. Jesus has risen from the dead, and off and on he has appeared for 40 days to the disciples in a resurrected, glorified body. And now at the very end in Acts 1, they're talking to him and he's giving last instructions. Think of the, how important this is. What does a person say is final words? He knows he's going to die, let's say. He doesn't say to his children or his wife, hey, son, take out the garbage. No, he's going to say something very momentous and important. So now listen to it. Uh, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now they're going to ask a prophecy question. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, good word now, listen, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power. That's dunamis, where we get dynamite. Dunamis in the Greek. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Now, I don't want to be confrontational or argumentative, but we really need to think about this, don't we? Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, told the disciples to wait for that experience. In the next chapter, the church age begins. And what do we find? We find fishermen and tax collectors who have never been to seminary, have no PhDs or MDivs, turning the world upside down, even though they had failed previously when they walked with the Lord. What was the difference? Teaching? Oh, no, no, listen. They had the best teacher, Jesus Christ. You want to know teaching? They were three and a half years with Jesus. Did that give them power? No, when he was arrested, they said, I'm out of town. I don't want to be caught in this. What made the difference? They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and with that filling came power. So when Peter witnessed, read his sermon in Acts 2, it's no work of oratory that we would admire with the natural mind. It's natural, plain speech. But it says at the end of the sermon, that they were probed and pricked and stabbed to the heart, those who listen. And they said, what must we do to be saved? What happened to Peter that he becomes this dynamite preacher? Exactly, the dynamite that comes with the Holy Spirit. So let's lay it down as a first principle. The church of Jesus Christ is to be built by people sharing the gospel. Oh, you mean preaching like you tried to do every Sunday? No, no. By all believers. When the Bible says they proclaim the word of God and the church grew and the gospel spread, it's not talking about pulpit preaching. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gathered here and all that. Let's turn to 1 Kings or whatever. No, it's people sharing, but their words have been anointed. What does that mean, anointed? That means covered with the power and person of the Holy Spirit so that it probes, it breaks through defense mechanisms, it casts light into dark places in people's minds. That's how the church was supposed to grow. Not by might, 
not by power, not by uh, oratory and clever presentations. No, it was to be built by my spirit, saith the Lord. Now, this is almost unthought about today. Someone once said the Holy Spirit could leave our planet Earth and go back to heaven. And many churches, many Christians wouldn't even notice it. Let's speak about churches. They wouldn't notice it because they don't need the Holy Spirit. They've learned how to do church without the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. They got it all typed out. They have a script. This follows this, follows this. And the presentation is beautiful. But boy, it doesn't change lives like what happened back 2,000 years ago where people became new creations, believed in Christ, and now were indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and his power began to be manifested in their lives. So, today is the challenge we all need to pray about. Here's the challenge. Oh God, fill our churches with the Holy Spirit. Fill our preachers and pastors with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we're going to have same old, same old. And I don't know if you've noticed, the, let's take the United States of America. It's not becoming more Christian every month and every year. No, nobody can say that. Well, I don't receive that. I want to talk faith talk. Talk faith talk all you want. It is what it is. You've got to face reality and say, God, send the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, be filled with the Spirit. The Apostle Paul's writing to a church, and it's a military command context of the Greek. Be filled with the Spirit. But more than that, it means be constantly being filled or be being filled. What does that mean? There's not one-time experience with the Holy Spirit, and there's such a thing as being filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled, i.e. controlled. Now, we learned yesterday, last session, that if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, i.e. the Holy Spirit, he doesn't belong to Christ. When you're born again, the Holy Spirit resides inside of every believer. But is every believer filled with the Holy Spirit? There's a section of Christendom that believes, no, no, you don't have to seek uh, more of the Holy Spirit or to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone's got the Holy Spirit. Don't go off on some wild, fanatical, spiritual bend. Ju just, just relax, study the Bible, and let's go out to eat. But let me suggest two things to you. Number one, when they picked the first deacons in Acts 6, the seven they were called, they were going to help doing mon uh, handing out food to widows so the apostles could give themselves to preaching the word and prayer. The Bible said the qualifications for the deacon, if that's what you want to call it, was he had to be known to be filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom. But wait a minute. Not everybody's wise. This, they had to be known to be wise. Obviously, not everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. To the same degree, that's why it's a qualification. If it was every Christian had it, why would they ever say that's a qualification? No, that's like, no, only pick people who are breathing to help you with that task. No, everyone's breathing if they're alive. This was something else. But further, there was a church that Jesus wrote to in the book of Revelation called the Laodicean Church in Laodicea in modern-day Turkey. And he said to me, I know about you. You're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm, tepid. And because of that, I'm going to vomit you, spew you out of my mouth. Now, if all churches are spirit-filled, if all Christians are spirit-filled, then language means nothing. If that's a spirit-filled church, why in the world would Jesus be threatening to vomit them out of his mouth? It's because they weren't spirit-filled. They had gotten into some mental experience only with the Lord. There was no energy. There was no power being manifested. There was very little, if any, sense of the presence of God. Come on, you and I know what that's about. A sermon can put you to sleep, and another guy preaches the same passage, and you feel like consecrating your life to Christ. What makes the difference? Oratory? No, the power of the Spirit. You go to some churches or to a meeting and you're dozing off within 15 minutes. And another one, you're just like, oh my goodness, God is real. 
So that's what we need to pray for. God, fill our churches, fill our lives, fill me, fill pastors, fill missionaries to make them effective. We can't be effective without the Holy Spirit. That's taught to us if anything else is taught to us in the book of Acts. They were effective not because of training, but because the Spirit rested upon them. Come on. You and I need to open up in a new way to the Holy Spirit and say, God, flood our lives and our churches and the ministers so that Jesus will be high and lifted up. They'll know he's alive because his spirit is working in us. God bless you.